So this is kind of the stuff that a lot of breeders, um, you know, big name breeders, bigger kennels, they're not telling you. And this is essentially, um, you know, what we did that allowed us to be able to quit our nine to fives and be able to breed dogs full time. So as you can see, somewhere around here, wherever, um, this was a text message that I sent to my boss when um, after working 10 years at a job that I hated, I was able to quit my job and be able to come a full-time dog breeder. Um, so I figured I get a lot of questions. How do I become a full-time dog breeder? Um, how do I quit my nine to five? How do I do this full-time? Things like that. So stay tuned and I'm gonna give you guys the tips and tricks that we use that worked for us. What's going on, Bully fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. So, um, like I said, I get the question all the time, like, like, you know, how did you quit your job? How did you become a dog breeder full time? Like, I, I want to be able to do the same, things like that. And it's very possible. Yes, it's possible. It's very, it, it's very possible that you can quit your day job if that's what you want to do. Some pre people who breed dogs. They want to do what they love every single day um, and with that being said like they want to do dog breeding they want to become full-time dog breeders but essentially obviously not like puppy mills or anything like that because in, in reality I only have a couple of litters a year what did you say what did you say I only have a couple of litters a year and to be honest, I like to keep a lot of the stuff, especially with the Angry Toy Bull bloodline that we're, you know, trying working on establishing. And what's crazy too is like I had friends and family when I told them my dreams of like becoming a full-time dog breeder and things like that, they thought I was crazy. My father told me himself, you know, he he was like, you know, that oh, you know, this is more of a fad or something like that or whatever. And we we spoke the other day and he was even telling me he's like and he, and he said I can't believe. You're actually, you know, you're doing it full time. You've proven me 100% wrong. And I'm telling you guys, like, I'm, you know, I'm nobody special. Like, if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it too. So anyway, I'm going to give you guys the gems that these other big name kennels, these other big breeders aren't giving you so that then, you know, if, if, if becoming a full-time dog breeder is what you're after, if, if that's not something you're interested in, then this video may not apply to you. Um, but, I mean, if it is something you're interested in, um, let me rephrase. Actually, if it's something that even doesn't interest you, these tips and tricks are going to allow you to still make a lot more money. Um, it's not all about money when it comes to the dog breeding, but hey, it's nice to make a living um, and doing it ethically without having to, you know, become a puppy mill and do all the other type of shady stuff. So anyway, so so here's the gem. Here's the secret. Here's the tip and trick. And in my opinion, I believe it's this one thing. Now, you have breeders who have different business models, but I think this is what's gonna for sure get you out of your nine to five. And it's multiple streams of income. So, um, don't get me wrong. I, when I was working my nine to five, I was waking up extremely early, going to bed extremely late, because I was so adamant about building this dog breeding program. But um, the real success that we saw was one was when we, we started focusing on multiple streams of income. And it's a lot easier to scale that way than trying to just be known for selling dogs for 10,000, 20,000, things like that. That will come in time, you know, being able to sell dogs for more money because of your brand, reputation, things like that. But in the meantime, multiple streams of income is what allowed us to quit our jobs and do dog breeding full time a lot faster. So, what I mean by multiple streams of income, prime example was we invested in a progesterone machine. And with the progesterone machine, um, it was really for ourselves at first, you know, so we weren't paying so much money for the vet. Like we were saving thousands of dollars a year, not having to go to the vet. But then people were mouth traveling. People started asking, hey, you know, uh, how much do you charge for progesterone? Oh wow, it's cheaper than the vet, I'll come to you. And next thing you knew, we were doing hundreds of dollars worth of, of progesterone testing a day um 
So, and, and then we learned about reverse progesterone testing, where now we can time when the puppies were going to be born. So that just added to our to our streams of income. So progesterone testing became a big service that we offered, and it was something we already knew how to do. Most of you guys should have an idea how to do it. I mean, we have plenty of episodes on Breeders Hacks how to do it. And um, that was the first thing we really kind of started doing was um, progesterone testing. We offered as well, we, uh, since people were coming for, us proje for progesterone testing, we started offering other services that people weren't as familiar with, doing AIs, semen evaluations. Um, we were evaluating semen for studs. Um, like I said, when somebody was coming for progesterone, if it was time to do the breeding, we do the breeding for them. We had some people who had to ship their semen. We started offering kind of like all these reproductive services. Um, and next thing we knew, we were making more money than we were at our jobs, you know? I always told myself the minute um, I see that I could be making more money doing my side hustle or whatever it is versus being at my job, if being at my job is causing me to lose money, that's when it's time for me to leave. So. Like I said, like all the services started to just come in. And the next thing you knew, we had breeders asking us about, um, you know, uh, different products that we used. So then we started selling the products as well. Um, and, and then that was another source of income. You know, um, then we had breeders who contacted us who wanted to learn certain things, like how to do progesterone and stuff like that. And we would say, hey, you know, you know, pay us this or whatever and, and you know, we'll, we'll do it for you. So next thing we knew, we started offering all these kinds of services and we were busy beyond belief. So I see other breeders all the time who have like different skills. Like another thing we were doing real quick, we were doing pictures for people because people loved how I took our pictures of our dogs. They wanted pictures similar. So we started offering the pictures. That was another stream of income. People were booking me for pictures. So next thing you know, like I said, streams of income coming everywhere. And when one thing slows down, another one picks up. So anyway, I seen, I started to see other breeders, you know, they started offering grooming. There's so many different avenues within this dog breeding world community um, that you can make money as a side hustle. You can have a side hustle for your side hustle. You know, dog breeding can be your passion and what you're passionate about and you sell puppies and that may be your side hustle because you work a job right now, but you can have a side hustle within your side hustle. And if you have different gifts and talents within this dog breeding thing, like some people, <laughs> another thing, I was making breeding banners because back then, like it was kind of cool to have like a breeding banner showing what stud you're breeding to what female with some cool backgrounds and stuff. So I was doing those for people as well. I'm creating digital pedigrees. That was another one. Like where basically, you know, we would put the pictures of the dogs in the pedigree and make like this digital pedigree. So it was like, it was like we were doing all kinds of stuff, anything and everything, which created multiple streams of income, which in turn um, projected us to fast forward the, the day I told my job I quit. I mean, I always had my mindset that I wanted to work for myself and be my own boss. But something happened at, at my job that really rubbed me the wrong way. And I said, I gotta get out of here. And then like the last year, I really like worked hard and grinded. And within a year's time, I was able to quit my job. And um, fast forward to where we're at now with the online store and working on the physical store and all that stuff. So um, I'm sure like the moral of the story, maybe I'm going on a tangent, but the moral of the story is you have gifts and talents. So you should capitalize on them. And especially if it correlates to the dog breeding, which most people have, most people bring their talents to the dog breeding game because of the fact that they already love the dogs and have a passion for it, things like that. And, and then they bring their talents, like whether it's fiction, uh, whether it's picture or photography. I mean, there's so many things. Um, and they put their spin on it with their talents. And, and that's how essentially you can make a living um, with multiple streams of income other than just breeding your dogs because uh, there are some breeders who get big off of just breeding, literally just breeding. Um, but you don't want to rely on that because there's too many factors on, on solely just that. Don't get me wrong, just solely on just that. Because now, when you have multiple streams of income, it allows you to actually be picky with your clients that want to purchase dogs from you and stuff like that. Like, we're, we're building a bloodline right now. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't want everybody to just have the blood. 
So we're, it allows us to be picky with you know who purchases it, the price points that we want to have our puppies at, things like that. You're, it allows you to keep the value of your dogs because if you try to survive just off of breeding dogs, what happens if you have a whole year um, something you know terrible happens and your females aren't taking on breedings? How do you stay afloat? You know, um, another stream of income is having stud dogs. You know, you can have stud dogs, um, but yet again, nothing's guaranteed. You know, you can have a stud dog that unfortunately passes away, and if you don't have another one lined up, then how are you gonna make money? So that's where, I mean, essentially layering up like that in multiple streams of income, actually, in my opinion, you're, you're safer than actually, you know, solely just working a job and not doing any other side hustles or anything else. Um, Cause you can get, fire tomorrow so uh yeah so i mean that's 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 pretty much i think in my opinion the key because if you look at some of these big breeders right like i'm gonna give you an example right like look at um the guy who has the hulk right he was also known for his endorsements with um you know like this company the dog food company and stuff like that he was known he was getting also paid from youtube i know for a fact he was getting paid from youtube things like that he had other streams of income Actually, that's another thing too. You get paid from online, like YouTube. We get paid to be on YouTube now, you know? So that's another way that you can bring in streams of income and, and keep you bringing in money even when you don't have puppies on the ground. So you don't have to be like a puppy mill where you're consistently producing litters and you have to sell, 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 you know? Um, so anyway, yeah, that's just like, that's my gem that I, I never heard. When I was coming up, becoming a breeder, I never heard um, other breeders talk about multiple streams of income and that's how you would be able to get out of working your nine to five a lot faster and a lot sooner I wish I would have known those things earlier on but hey I know them now and I'm sharing them with you guys so um, yeah so I mean if you guys got any questions or anything like that please you know drop a comment down below you know if you think I'm uh, you know maybe what I'm saying there's a portion that's, that's truth hey if you agree drop a comment if you disagree let me know I and mean, drop a comment, you know? Um, I do think YouTube is like, kind of like suppressing some of the videos with the YouTube algorithm as far as like who they show the video to and stuff. So, hey, if you if you found this helpful and you want me to talk more about like the business side of Breeders Hacks, um, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, you know? So then the YouTube algorithm shows this to other, you know, breeders like yourselves or people like yourselves and, um, you know, it, it keeps us uh, it, it keeps us motivated to keep putting out videos like this. So anyway, guys, I know I went on a tangent, but if 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 you guys took anything from this video, remember multiple streams of income. That's how you'll be financially free. Anyway, hope it was helpful. Hope it was useful. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Breeders Hacks.